Okay, here we're going to look at the kingdoms of life, and we're going to use this simple and basic six kingdom system. You'll notice we have our eukarya up here and our prokaryotes down here. These are still classified, and each is its own independent kingdom, and all supports life in some way. So this kingdoms of life, the designation of kingdoms has changed over the years. We're going to focus on one particular system. Originally, there were only two kingdoms. As more organisms were obtained, and the numbers of kingdoms increased, the taxonomic level uh, regarding higher than a kingdom has also been recognized. We call that the domain. That's a broader category or way to categorize things. So here's some different approaches. We're going to use this Woe's example uh, from 1977. This six kingdom system, where you bacteria, archaea bacteria, protozoa, plants fungi and animals is what we're going to do. Now you'll notice way back, uh, if you've watched some of the previous videos, we talked about a simple two kingdom system, where there's simple plants and animals. We have since learned there's more divisions than that, all the way up to uh, potentially eight divisions. And notice that just because we're choosing this six kingdom system does not mean there's other six kingdom systems that also exist. This is going to fit our purposes for our class, but I want you to realize that there are different ways to potentially classify living organisms. This is the one we're going to most widely use, definitely in this class. So our um, phylogenetic tree of life, you'll notice our bacteria, our archaea, and our eukarya, and what classifies, what classifies as a certain categories for here. This is, again, just an example. We see the branch points, and the closer things are to one another, the more closely they are related. And we're going to spend a couple uh, videos on different organizations of these. These are more closely related to each other than either is to bacteria. Because if you notice this branch point here, both of these stem from the same area. These branch out earlier, indicating these bacteria are more distantly related than these two are to each other. So the six kingdom system, that universal ancestor, that common ancestor, and then we branch out. And this is a one stick figure way of presenting it. This is kind of the bubble way, and this is another way. Kind of like this one. I use this one. You've seen it in some of the other slides because it kind of puts little pictures. So an animal, you see the example of literally an, uh, an animal, uh, like a fish here, fungi, looks like a mushroom, plants kind of looks like a leaf, uh, and so on and so forth. So you can see our uh, protista, our eubacteria, and kind of this gives a little bit of description, a very brief description of what each is. So how does this look uh, in the diagram of relationship among the six kingdom system? So here's our original cell. We're noticing division points beyond there. And whatever is shares a same division point shares that common ancestor. So these archaea, uh, these three different archaea are very closely related and very distantly related to, say, bacteria. Well, notice here, though, we see our mitochondria and our chloroplasts kind of bridging this gap from bacteria to kind of the kingdom of eukarya. So these are symbiotic events. These are events that occurred um, in both our photosynthetic bacteria and also our purple bacteria with the mitochondria. Remember, remember our, um, the theories we talked about of the endosymbiotic theory, where mitochondria and chloroplasts were once free-living bacteria that have been incorporated into eukaryotes. This example here, again, of our six kingdom system provides the domain, the kingdom, the cell type, the structures, the number of cells, the mode of nutrition, and examples of them. These are different ways we can classify them and ways that we can see how each is unique. So cell type, remember our prokaryotes versus our eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are membrane-bound organelles. Uh, prokaryotes are not. This domain of eukarya is very broad. Within eukarya, there's protists, there's fungi, there's plants, and there's animals. Notice our domain of bacteria and archaea are separate. And of course, we have our pepnoglycan um, walls for our bacteria. If you remember when we did, we talked about the gram stain. A unicellular, uh, both of these are unicellular. Most of these are multicellular. There might be a couple that are unicellular within the fungi. Overall, um, eukarya, as far as plants and animals goes, those are all multicellular. And again, here's some examples. So just a nice little kind of comparison. Can you be able to compare or understand a little bit about what makes the classification for each of these kingdoms unique and different?